Hello everyone, it's Alston here. In this video, we're gonna try and replicate lightning. And I'm gonna show you how I do it when painting on just a canvas. And also I'm gonna show you how to do it on a mini as well. So, painting lightning. I've seen this done many times. And a lot of the times when people initially do it, they forget a key source of it. Um, we'll get to that shortly. So. What is lightning? Lightning is electricity from clouds down to the earth. There's science behind it, but I'm not a scientist. So I'm not going to pretend I am. So it's something to do with ion particles and charging and negative versus positive and all that jazz, but I'm not a scientist. So I'm not going to bother explaining that. But what I'm going to try and do is replicate the image of lightning. Now, lightning is a tricky thing to replicate because it's instantaneous. It's a flash. There's not a lot to it apart from an instantaneous flash of electricity from the clouds down to the ground. We're going to try and replicate that. The easiest way to get reference for this is photographs. Photographs which have been taken at such a high speed that they've actually managed to catch the lightning in effect. We're working with the speed of electricity, so it's going to be relatively fast. Now, to replicate that on a model or on a canvas or anything as well, there are a couple of things we need to do. One, we need to make sure the kind of composure and physicality of it is to a degree accurate. However, it's basically, we're going to exaggerate it a little bit because the translation of photograph to canvas and everything like that, unless you're going for really realistic, we're going for a relatively expressive kind of almost cartoonish look to this. So what do we need to do to create the composure and the physicality of that? So we need to, uh, we've got a couple of rules we've got in play here. One of them is no curved lines. So unlike the stripes tutorial, this one, we have no curved lines. These are all straight lines. However, we're going to do them in tiny little parts that are going to follow all the way down to the ground. Two, direction. Now direction is, you can be relatively liberal with this. Usually a lightning strike comes down. However, usually it's going at a slight angle and that's what we're gonna replicate. We can try the vertical line. However, it becomes a bit zigzaggy. Three, forks. A lot of lightning that I've seen done is one sort of beam or continuous strand, if you will. Lightning doesn't do that. It's got forks that come off of it all over the place. However, I've seen it when forks have been done too much and it looks like a tree. So we need to play this balance game between a lot and a little, and sometimes less is more, and sometimes you need to put a bit more in. You'll get the hang of this. There's not really an exact way of doing it. So let's get started. What we're gonna do in this first one, we're gonna use blue. The color composition is kind of up to you. You can, you can throw reds in there, you can throw yellows in there, uh, blue is the most common stereotypical lightning that you'll see. However, as I said, there's various different things depending on the environment and so forth. And um, we'll cover a little bit of that later. There's, there's an element to this. With this, you want to make sure that you've got a relatively good point. Now, the, f the first kind of drawing down, if you will, because effectively we're going to be drawing to start with, you don't need to have the sharpest brush on hand. You probably will do later. However, the beginning part, not so much. Also, as well, it's worthwhile watering this down just a little bit. You don't need this to be the most solid line in the world. So let's get started. So we're going to start over here and we're going to, again, we're going to try and do a slight angle coming down. And again, we don't want, we don't want any curves in this. So all you do is tiny little marks. And if you do this kind of stair pattern to start with, to get you used to it, then that's fine. Once you're kind of used to this stair pattern, you can start moving on to be a bit more adventurous and stretch it out. And then maybe curl back, cut back on itself, work your way around. And all we're gonna do right now is just build the body of the lightning. If you do end up curving, it's not a big deal right now. This this bit is not necessarily essential. This is where you can make the most mistakes. Be a little bit liberal with it and play about. So, and again, forks. This is this is a thing. So initially, this line doesn't look very much at all. It's just a load of straight lines all kind of connecting. 
But as soon as the forks go in, you start, your brain will start realizing what's going on there. As long as you've seen pictures of lightning or you've seen lightning in the past, your brain will start understanding this. Okay. This is the point, and this is this is the tricky bit, which you kind of you need to play around with to get used to it. Is when to branch off and how much you need to branch off. So I'm just gonna put this in like this and this coming down like that. Again, just want to make sure your brush is relatively loaded with paint here. And you, as I said, you don't need to be massively detailed at this point. So something to bear in mind when doing lightning as well is the buildup. And that's usually when forks happen. So when a fork happens, I treat it, and I might be wrong in the science of this, again, we can, we can muck up a little bit like I did just there, is the build-up causes the split. And again, I'm not a scientist, so I could be getting this wrong, but this is the way I envisage it, that where the build-up happens and a fork occurs, is you can be relatively generous around that area and create either more opaque sort of levels or just thicker sort of areas of paint. Okay, and size, size does matter. However, remember this less is more element. We want to try and replicate that. If you go too much, it ends up looking like an upside down blue tree and you don't really want that. Again, just keep reloading your brush if you need to. I'm gonna stop about there. So it's kind of like a little bit of a upside down blue tree, but that's fine, that works. So that color I just used was Vallejo Gamer Magic Blue. I'm now gonna switch up to Vallejo Gamer Electric Blue. I'm gonna find a thinner brush here as well. Let's have a look through our broken toad brushes. Okay, got Mark II Zero from Broken Toad here. Also as well, if you're not aware, we are sponsored by Broken Toad. So if you are in the market or if you're looking for some really good sable hair brushes for really precise work, I cannot recommend them highly enough. I pretty much exclusively use them unless I'm doing metallics in which case I would switch out to a synthetic brush but for all my accurate work I've been using Broken Toad for years so I can't recommend it highly enough there'll be a link below as well so if you want to go check it out also as well say Elston sent you if you do decide to purchase anything so so now we're going to switch on to the electric blue what we do here is we go over the line again which is easy enough. And again, we focus around the blue, but what we're trying to do is be even thinner. So we follow the line, but if we can get inside the line without covering the other blue, then that's a success. That's what we're aiming for. It doesn't matter massively. Uh, you can be relatively liberal with all of this. You don't need to be that precise and and the more you practice with this, the more you will get used to what to do with it as well. There is a trick towards the end of this. 
where I will show you that you can be relatively messy. I'm not being that precise here. That's our next step. Again, there's not a massive amount going on here right now. I've just done a blue over a blue and that's it. It doesn't matter if you have if you don't get it massively consistent as well. They, it's okay to have it more opaque in some areas than others. That's absolutely fine. Now, next trick. We are gonna add some white to this. Now, with the white. I would like you to be a bit more sparing with this. I would like you to just put the white in the areas of most buildup. So where the forks happen, so what I've been calling the buildup, and all you need to do is just put a mark in that area. Again, with this, you don't have to be massively neat. Just plonk it down where you think you need it. And sometimes you can even define some of the lines and some of these forks a bit more with it. It's no problem. And you can even create smaller little forks off of it if you want to as well. Here's your opportunity. But at this point, you really do need a quite fine brush or at least a sharp point on your brush to be able to pull this off there's some areas I'm just gonna add a little bit of white anyway to uh, make it a little bit more interesting Now at this point, that's absolutely fine. You could probably get away with that. Uh, what I would do if I was gonna use just a brush, I would probably glaze over a little bit of the blues back on top of this, um, but very, very thin down, very, very thin glaze all over the top to blend all these colors back in. We, however, are gonna utilize a tool, which I love. We're gonna use the airbrush on this point. However, before we do that, I'm gonna play around with another color. So we're gonna come back in a second and we're gonna show you another lightning that I've done in a different color scheme. So back in a moment. There's another one. It's a bit more of a stylized one. So we'll see how this comes out. And then over here, we're gonna do a bit of an experiment. Now let's add in the element which is gonna make this look way better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up our airbrush with a bit of water and a bit of flow improver. And then just a couple of dots of white. We find an old brush. And mix it all up. Till it's a consistent white. Now it should be relatively thin. As you can see there, it's near enough water, but it's just a hint of white there. Okay, now I always try to test out the airbrush first. So we're gonna try and see what it's coming out like. Now, 
Now with that, I can see, I think I need to add a little bit more white to it. So I'm just gonna add a couple more drops. Want to be really sparing with this. That's better. I can actually start seeing a white mark now. So here's where the magic happens. With lightning, the key is in the word lightning. Where most people go wrong when painting lightning on miniatures or on canvases is the glow effect. Lightning is light, it's electricity. Uh, most lights in this day and age, apart from candlelight and firelight, are generated by electricity, therefore emanate a glow, which we use on a day-to-day -day basis right now. Hey, even what you're seeing right now is from an electrical light. So lightning is the same. So what we need to do is add the element of glow to it. This is where most people forget to add this part. They do the main body and then they forget the outer exposure of it. This is where we use our airbrush. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lightly and this is, you might have to play around with your PSI and your pressure on your airbrush here. We're just going to slowly put this white, very fine, very thin down glow over the model. Now, again, try and focus on the forks and what you'll see is all your colors get blended. So you know what I was saying about being liberal and you can be messy and stuff like that. That all applies still. You can even go a bit wider if you want to, if you want to make the glow a bit more substantial. You can go heavier in some areas. If it does do that pooling, that little spider thing like that, just dry it out and then focus a few more back to that area so if you get that puddle effect I just fix it by making that area really bright now you might have to rebalance the picture if you find one area has become super bright and other areas haven't you might have to go to other areas and make them brighter um, if it is it's not a problem Again, this is all something you'll learn with time and practice. You, you, you just get better at it as you go on. If you ever look back at the channel, I did a video, I think about six years ago, on how to paint um, a fell blade from Warhammer 40k or 30k, sorry. Uh, that's where I figured out how to do lightning. And it all came to me when I was looking at reference pictures. And I realized that lightning had more to it than the initial body. And you had to create the environment around it for the picture to really sell. So this is all about creating the after effect of the, the image. So you are basically placing it in an environment And there you go, you have lightning. Now I've got a bit heavy with the light there. That's that's fine though. Again, you can come in, you can do more, you can do less. It's absolutely fine. But that gives off the image of lightning. A thing which happens a bit is sometimes it doesn't dry quickly enough and you get the pooling effect. So if that's the case, either just blow air at it to dry it out, or just give it a second, wait for it to dry and then come back again. So that's how it's come out, that's a bit strange that wasn't really i was just practicing with that one so but that's to show you what you can do with a different color so now let's try it on a mini so it seemed the most fitting to try it on a tank because it's nice and easy it's a little bit trickier on curves because you gotta go around the curve but a rhino was quite handy for this so we're just going to follow the same pattern. Now I've done an environment already on this. This is how I do my Night Lords. So this already has a certain amount of an environment on it already. So this is kind of handy. Um, the trickiest part about this is it's blue on blue. So you have to be a little bit distinct and usually the first forks and composure and everything like that have to be kind of a bit thick and heavy just so that you can see what's going on. 
I don't want this one to be overly exaggerated. I don't really want this to dominate the tank because um, there'll be lightning all over this thing. So less is more and all that jazz. And as you can see, I'm kind of skirting that line of it becoming a blue tree, which we don't really want. So you can do this relatively rapidly once you kind of got the knack for it. So as you could see, you could leave it like that if you didn't want to use an airbrush or if you don't have an airbrush, that's absolutely fine. I would probably just, as I said, glaze over it with the blue again, just to blend the colors back in and then it'll be fine. But I like the glow effect we get from the lightning. So we're going to crack out the airbrush again. And you can just gradually work your way down, blending the colors, short little bursts. So I'm just tapping the trigger. And we can get that blend in. And there we go. Nice, simple, easy. Not hard to do. Uh, however, you do need an airbrush. So if I've eliminated you from this painting tutorial because you don't have an airbrush, I do apologize. However, if you're thinking about getting one, this is a cool trick to try if you're gonna get into it. So you don't need a big fancy one to do this. The key is just trigger control and thinning down your paints. You will have failures with this. It does take a little bit of a knack. If any advice I can give, go a little bit thicker with the white than you think. Sometimes thin is going to cause you more problems than it's worth. So usually thicker can save you a lot of grief. That is how you do lightning. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like, subscribe, all that jazz for more videos coming up in the future. And until next time, everyone be good, be safe, and I shall see you all then. Till then, bye bye.